Hi, my name is Peter Chen and I'm Assistant Professor of Biochemistry at the University of Massachusetts. And I'm here at Cell Press today to talk to an editor about what I should consider before submitting my manuscript for publication. So I'm talking today to Chris Dixon, an editor of Neuron. So Chris, what should I do about pre-submission inquiries and how do I submit them? Hi Peter. So really pre-submission inquiries, they're a service that we provide to the authors and allows authors to early on in the process to get an idea of whether the breadth and the scope of their study might be appropriate for a particular journal. So in the case of a pre-submission inquiry, you can actually do this quite early on, potentially even before the manuscript has been written, and it allows authors to get early editorial feedback and advice on whether their paper might be appropriate. The pre-submission inquiry process is probably best utilized in cases where an author may be concerned about competition from other labs and wants to know whether or not they can have an expedited review process, or in cases where other work might have recently come out and they're worried about how the editors might feel that that work impacts their own work. So how are the decisions on these inquiries made? So the decisions on the inquiries made are based on an assessment of the breadth of the study and how the advances in the study extend beyond past work. So it's important that in addition to the title and the abstract, you also include a brief summary statement that explains to the editor why you think it advances the field, what papers you feel are important that have kind of set the stage and how it extends beyond those. It's also, I guess, it should be, it's important to note that in cases where you already have the full paper written, it's maybe not the best option. At that point, you may be better off actually submitting the full paper to the journal. Though, of one note, Current Biology is the one journal at Cell Press that does require everybody to submit a pre-submission inquiry first. So, I have this fantastic idea for a review. So, should I submit a pre-submission inquiry for that? Certainly, yeah. We're always looking for good review ideas, and you can submit pre-submission inquiries on reviews the same way you would regular pre-submission inquiries. So I know an important part of the submission is the cover letter. So what should I actually include in this cover letter? Right, so that's a good point, Peter, because actually there are a lot of people who don't utilize the cover letter as it should be. And it's a really good way for you as an author to have a conversation. You can't have a conversation like we're having one-on-one -on -one here, but you can actually have that, pa that conversation on paper and explain to the editor why you feel your paper is important, what you th think are the important points that your paper makes, how it extends beyond the past literature, and why you feel that the paper should ultimately be accepted in the journal. It's also the place where, again, you can mention if you're worried about specific known competition and feel that you may need an expedited review process, or in cases where maybe you've met an editor at a meeting, or you've had that conversation through a pre-submission inquiry, and you want to let the editors know that that's occurred. So who should I actually address these cover letters to? So you can address the cover letter to generically to the editor or the editors, um, and again, in cases where you've maybe had a conversation, you can address uh, the cover letter specifically to an editor. So I've been told that you can both include and exclude reviewers in your cover letter. So can you tell me a little bit more about how this works? Right. So the editors at Cell Press don't require that anybody include or exclude reviewers, but we do actually encourage that authors suggest potential reviewers to be utilized. For one, this allows the editors to get an idea of how you as the author feel the paper should be viewed in terms of what aspects need to be critically scientifically vetted. In addition, it allows the editors who are always looking to expand their reviewer pool some insights into other possible reviewers that they should consider. In terms of exclusions, you absolutely are allowed to, use, to include exclusions, and we completely respect those. We do not send the paper out to anybody you've excluded, though in most cases the cell press editors do ask that you limit those exclusions to, up to, to only three reviewers. So I'm just wondering, but is the information in the cover letter actually shared with anyone else? So the cover letter is considered confidential information, which means it is purely viewed by people in-house on the editorial staff. So that means it is not included to the reviewers, and it's also important to note that it is not sent out to any editorial board members either. So I think one of the unique things about the Cell Press journals is that you can co-submit to multiple journals. Can you tell me a little bit more about this? Yeah, so the co-submission process is unique to Cell Press, and it provides an opportunity in cases where, where an author may feel that their submission is potentially within the scope of more than one Cell Press title to actually have their paper co-reviewed at more than one journal at the same time. So, I mean, I can submit to every single journal at once? So you can only submit to two journals at one time. Um, and the way the process works is that you submit your paper as you would any other normal time to one particular journal, but then in the cover letter you also say you would like it co-considered at a second journal. And Oh, sorry. So what are the pros and cons to co-submitting these journals? Uh, so so the, the pros are essentially in the process, and maybe I'll explain that initially a little bit first. So the, the process of co-submission is, as I said, the same as you know any normal submission. You submit and you just indicate that you want it co-considered. And at that point, the two journals independently assess the paper and decide whether to send it out for peer review. 
In the case where both journals decide it's appropriate for peer review, then the editors work together to choose reviewers. And it's at that point that the process can take a little longer than it would at an individual journal because it requires the two editors to collaborate with each other to choose reviewers. But because the reviewers or the editors have agreed that the reviewers are appropriate, it means that any indecision that they make is based on those same reviewers. So it can actually speed up the process in comparison to potential sequential submission process where the editors of a second journal may feel that they need to pull in additional reviewers. So finally, I guess, what are the major points that I should keep in mind before submitting my article to a cell press journal? Mm -hmm. So I think the things we've talked about are the pre-submission inquiry, which is probably best used at early stages when maybe you haven't even had the manuscript submitted and you're wanting some early feedback on whether the paper might be appropriate for a cell press title. There's also the cover letter. When, when you're thinking about submitting to a paper, you should really utilize that cover letter as a way to stress to the editors why you feel your paper is important and what it brings to the field. And then additionally, you can think about, in cases where you feel your paper is potentially appropriate for multiple journals, actually doing a co-submission to more than one journal. And I should note that you can only do that for two journals at one time. That's great. Well, thank you very much for your time, Chris. I really appreciate it.